We're at the Rosenberg Library, museum curator Eleanor Barton. Eleanor, what is this? So this is a drawing of the capture of the Union vessel Harriet Lane. Yeah, so I met Kathleen Macca at the cemetery and she told me a fascinating story about this. So Kathleen is an author of the book Galveston's Broadway Cemeteries. She's got a lot of stuff in her head. We're going to talk about the Battle of Galveston today, right? Yes, we are. This is actually one of the most poignant reminders of the Civil War battle that was fought in Galveston. And it's a father and son story. Albert Lee was a graduate of West Point who moved to Texas. His son stayed behind in the U.S. Naval Academy to finish his education. And during that time, the Civil War broke out. The Elder Lee decided that he was going to fight on the Confederate side because he was living in Texas. And he told his son to follow his heart to choose which side to fight on. And his son chose the Union side because he felt he would be a traitor if he didn't. So they knew that they might never see each other again. And if they did, it was going to be on the battlefield. Wow. The older Lee was living in Corsicana at the time of the Battle of Galveston. And he heard that the Harriet Lane had come into port. And that was the ship that he had heard his son was first officer on. So he came to Houston to ask his friend General Magruder about it and found out that the Confederates were going to attempt to retake the harbor within a week. So he stayed and he was present for the battle. He was actually fighting against the side that his son was fighting on, which is pretty tragic. What's even more tragic is after the Confederacy won the port back, he asked for permission to go aboard the ship and found his son who was mortally wounded. He'd been shot in the stomach. And he told his son he was there. His son acknowledged it. But the doctor that was making the rounds of all the wounded just handed him a flask of whiskey and said, he's mortally wounded. There's nothing I can do. Just give him a sip of whiskey to ease the pain. Well, his father wasn't willing to accept that. So he ran back into town to try to get permission to bring him to the hospital. And while he was gone, his son perished. But when his son perished, one of his mates was holding him and said, is there anything I can do for you? And his last words were, no, I'm fine. My father is here. So that's actually the epitaph that's at the bottom of the stone or his last words, my father is here. Now he and Wainwright, Jonathan Wainwright, were both on the Harriet Lane and both died in the battle. So Wainwright and Lee were buried side by side. Side by side. Now Wainwright was moved five years later. He's in Annapolis now. But when a fairly wealthy relative of the Lees offered to move Edward home, his father said that he would have wanted to rest where he fought near the water. Right. So he is the only one that remains here. So the Masons that helped with this funeral, mm -hmm. um, it just seems odd that they would bury a Union soldier with a Masonic funeral in a Galveston cemetery. How'd that happen? Well, they were buried with full Masonic honors, but there were Masons on both sides. And because all Masons consider themselves brothers and part of the brotherhood, they came together to mourn the loss of both sides. But this joint burial happened to just kind of symbolize all of the loss. I was looking at your Facebook page mm -hmm. and I noticed some photos of uh, a reenactment. Yes. What was that? Every other year, the local Masons and um, the local heritage societies uh, come out here and in full costume, some are in Union costume, some are in Civil War or Confederate costume. The ladies are in the big hoop skirts in mourning and they have speakers. They come out here and reenact the entire funeral and it's really a sight to see if you get a chance to see it. So the unusual thing about the top of his gravestone is that the anchor usually symbolizes hope when you see it on gravestones. On his, it actually symbolizes the Navy that he was a part of. And you can see the remainder of his scabbard that started to wear away. And these would have been his binoculars that he would have used as first officer on the ship. So it's very Navy oriented. It's really beautiful. 
So Eleanor, these sketches have something to do with the story we just heard. Right, right. So this sketch actually shows the Harriet Lane, the Union ship here, being rammed by the Bayou City, the Confederate ship. And the Confederates actually went on board the Harriet Lane um, and captured um, most of the crew and killed several of the officers, including Lieutenant Lee and Commander Wainwright. That's right. And what's this other one? So this is another sketch. So both of these were made during the battle itself, which was early in the morning on New Year's Day, 1863. Um, this sketch shows a larger view of the scene. Right here you can see the Harriet Lane um, being rammed by the Bayou City. So that's kind of uh, same thing. the same thing as this drawing here. But it also shows the additional Union vessels that were out here near Pelican Island. Um, and all of the shooting, you can see lots of smoke. So, so there were cannons being shot from these ships into downtown Galveston. And if you look really closely, you can also see these cannons that were inside of the downtown commercial buildings being shot towards um, the bay. And is that the Henley Building? So this is the Henley Building here, and you can see on the second floor there are cannons coming out of nearly every window here. Um, and the cupola? And the cupola is up here on top. Yep. So this is where the watchmen were stationed and they could see everything that was happening out in the bay. The guy that drew this, I mean, he's amazing. Is that him on this little boat? Is that? Yes. This? So the person, James Burke, who made this sketch was actually in this little boat right here. You can see near Pelican Spit. So he had a good point of observation of both the bay here in the downtown area and then the vessels that were out in open water. And who sketched this one? And so this sketch was done by George Grover and George Grover was actually serving as um, mayor during the city of Galveston during the Civil War. Um, and, and after this event, um, something that's interesting is he actually donated um, a couple of burial plots in his family plot at Episcopal Cemetery here in Galveston um, so that two of the Union uh, soldiers could be buried here with full Masonic honors. And that was where Lee and Wainwright That's laid. where Lee and, and Wainwright ended up. Yeah, and this Grover guy, he's the same one that did the panoramic sketch from the panoramic sketch episode. He, he is, he's quite an artist, and he yeah. depicted the earliest views that we have here of Galveston. Okay, well thank you, Eleanor, that was fascinating. Thanks, Lee.